السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today, inshallah, we will have a look upon another female companion of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Her name is Umm Salama, the mother of the believers, Umm Salama. So who is this? blessed woman so Umm Salama was a, a noble Qurashi from Makhzum tribe she was a lady who was very uh, known for for her social status her father was named as his title, his nickname was Zadur Rakib. And the word Zadur Rakib means that he was the one who would provide for the people who are traveling with him. He would provide them with all they need during their trip. So if they are, if someone travels with them, with him, uh, he's not supposed to hold anything. He's not supposed to take care of anything. Uh, her father would provide everything that this traveler who tra who's traveling with him that he might need. So he was known for uh, his amazing uh, generosity. So, Um Salama was married to her cousin, Abi Salama, and he was the cousin of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was also his brother uh, uh, of nursing. So, he and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were brothers in milk. So she was married to her cousin, Abu Salama, and she had uh, a boy called Salama. And that's why she's called Umm Salama. And she, uh, she uh, gave birth to Salama when they were in Habasha. So when she migrated to Medina later on, she had Umar, Zainab, and Durra. So she had four children from uh, Abi Salama. So uh, Um Salama and Abu Salama were uh, accepted Islam uh, and they were of the pioneers who accepted Islam actually. And they, uh, they both migrated to Habasha and Um Salama had a very important role when she was in Habasha uh, we all know the story that after uh, the Muslims migrated to to Habasha, they uh, uh, they 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 went to the land uh, whose uh, king is so just, and he was very well known for that. So when she went, when when those Muslims migrated there, uh, Quraysh sent uh, people after them. So they sent Amr ibn al-As, who was a friend of Negus, the, the uh, king, and his friend Umar ibn al-Walid. So Amr ibn al-As and Umar ibn al-Walid were <clears throat> sent by Quraysh uh, to Habasha, to Abyssinia, just to get those Muslims back to Mecca 
so they would be tortured there. And Um Salama radiallahu anha narrated very accurately, very carefully the incident uh, and she said it in an amazing way. She described everything, every single small thing was described by Um Salama. So the stories that she mentioned are uh, written and they are now with us as a historical document that everyone goes back to. So Um Salama did not care about anything at the palace of, of the king. She did not care about anything there. But she knew that she is a Muslim and there is she has she has a role to fulfill and there is no difference between a male and a female as long as the heart is full of iman so she was the uh, narrator who narrated that story now Things, of course, did not work out for Amr ibn al-As and Umar ibn al-Walid, and uh, the king decided, um, uh, you, uh, I'm not giving the, the, you, you back the Muslims, and they are staying here. So the Muslims stayed in uh, Abyssinia as uh, long as they uh, they they stayed, and uh, later on, a Muslim went back uh, from Abyssinia with th those who came back and uh, uh, they went back to uh, Mecca and it was later that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has ordered uh, Muslims to migrate to Medina. So she said, I was uh, with my husband uh, on the camel traveling to uh, Medina and it was so hot the desert was um, flaring hot so her she she had her son Salama with her as we said she had only one son at that time so uh, she was holding him and uh, trying not to make him feel the fear when she uh, so her people, uh, 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 some men of her people uh, from Bani al-Maghira, they followed them and uh, they wanted to get them back. So the, the, the men had uh, uh, separated the wife and the uh, husband um and uh, they uh, they did not allow uh, abu salama to take his wife with him so uh, they they um, uh, returned um salama and her son to to medina abu salama uh, ran away and he went to medina so her her tribe her people said we are not going to leave our uh, uh, grandchild with you so they took the child from her and she was alone so she stayed about a year that every every night every uh, uh, every uh, morning she would go out to al abtah to the place called al abtah and she would stay there for a long time, crying and crying. Uh, and that was for about a year. Until one day, uh, uh, her cousin uh, um, look, uh, met her and he felt so bad. He felt so sorry for her. And he tried to convince uh, the, the uh, people to let her go. So they accepted and they said, go uh, follow your husband if you, if you wish. So the boy was returned to his mom and she 
traveled and she met her husband and of course she was so happy to see Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now Musalama one day was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she said to him Ya Rasulullah لا أسمع الله ذكر النساء في الهجرة بشيء O oh, Messenger of Allah I, I haven't heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the women uh, in, in, uh, while migrating. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed ayah 195 of Surah Ali Imran. فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَنِّي لَا أُضِيعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِّنْكُمْ مِّنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى بَعْضُكُمْ مِّنْ بَعْضٍ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and their Lord responded to them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, never uh, will I allow to be uh, to be lost the work of any of any person, any worker, anyone who did anything among you, whether male or female. So you are one of one another one another so um, um Salama wanted to to ask about women's rights so she was not shy to ask Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she did and there was a revelation that answered her request so Subhanallah. Now time passed and uh, the, it was the battle of Badr. So her husband participated in the battle. And uh, later on, it was the battle of Uhud. And of course, Abu Salama uh, was with the uh, army of the Muslims. In Uhud, he was severely injured. But Alhamdulillah, it was his his wound was healed. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, uh, sent him uh, later in a, in a dispatch to uh, Bani Asad. But when he came back, his wound got worse and uh, uh, it would never heal. And subhanAllah, he was he died because of that wound so he was he was amongst the martyrs for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um salama was so sad she was so loyal to abi salama she was so sad that she lost him and she remembered that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say Man asabathu musibatun falyakul inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun Allahumma indaka ahtasibu musibati fa'jurni fiha wa abdilni khayran minha So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say to, to advise everyone who, who uh, passes through a calamity, who suffers from a calamity, to say, listen to this and, and, and mem memorize it. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. So we belong to Allah and to him we, we shall return. Oh Allah, Compensate me in my affliction. Recompense my loss and give me something better in exchange for it. So she remembered uh, when she was full of sorrow, full of uh, 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 distress. She, she, said, she remembered the words of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, who will be better? Who will be better in exchange for Abi Salama? But even though she uh, she said the dua, 
and Um Salama was uh, was sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised and he will fulfill the promise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala substituted her for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He substituted him with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So how did it happen? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent someone to propose for her. And she said, well, she, she, she knew that she has jealousy and she might not be a good wife for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she sent to him and she said, I am a jealous, I am so jealous woman. فَأَخَافُ أَنْ تَرَى مِنِّي شَيْئًا يُعَذِّبُنِ اللَّهُ بِهِ I am, I am scared that you would see something from me, from, uh, 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 from uh, whatever I might do because of this jealousy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will torture me because of that. وَأَنَا امْرَأَةٌ قَدْ دَخَلْتُ فِي السِّلْنِ وَأَنَا ذَاتُ عِيَالٍ So I am uh, an old woman. And I have children. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, so when he got this answer from her, he said, So whatever you have mentioned about being jealous, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will cure you of this. And uh, what you have mentioned of the old age, I am old too. And what you have mentioned of, of your children, then I will tell you, your children are my children. So she accepted. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married Umm Salama. And she said, أبدلني الله بأبي سلمة خيرا منه. So رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, Allah has replaced me. He has substituted me, uh, uh, substituted Abu سلمة with a better person than him, سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. So أم سلمة was uh, one of the uh, female companions who narrated the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she narrated about 378 hadith from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now she is in the household of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She's seeing everything, all the actions, everything, uh, all the uh, blessed words that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, everything. So she, she narrated a lot from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, of course, she, uh, she lived at the house of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she loved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a lot. And because of that love, she would buy, uh, she would do a lot of things. One of them is to buy slaves and then free them and uh, tell them they have to serve Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She wanted to do anything for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She would, she would, uh, uh, get some share of the um, uh, wudu of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of the blessed uh, water that he, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would make his wudu so that he would have the blessings of that water. She would keep some of his blessed hair uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, it, 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 she would show to people who wanted to bless, to be blessed by this, these uh, these blessed hairs of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she would uh, put them in water and she would give, uh, uh, then she would remove them. So uh, she would give the water to sick people to get the barakah and to get healed by the 
traces of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that water. So, Umm Salama radiyallahu anha uh, as, as we said, she was uh, a jealous woman, but of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has healed her. So she would talk about other mothers of believers very uh, fairly. So when she was asked about Zainab bin Tujahsh, uh, Ummul Mu'mineen radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, she was fair. She was truthful. She was so pious. When she talked about her, she said, كانت امرأة صالحة صوامة قوامة صنعا تتصدق بذلك كله على المساكين. So she said she was a good, pious uh, woman. She was uh, a woman who would uh, do, uh, would be praying, uh, fasting, and she was creative in handwork, and she would spend and she would donate all that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she would give it to the masakeen to the poor so this was Umm Salama radiallahu anha having very good manners she was beautiful she was wise she was intelligent she had political knowledge uh, she was uh, a very wise woman a very wise uh, a female companion of Sayyidina Muhammad she was a very wise wife we all know the story of uh, Al-Hudaybiya when Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, went to Umrah with his companions but Quraysh would not let him enter Mecca so they reconciliated and it was the one of the conditions that the Muslims would go back this year to Medina and they will come back next year. So they won't allow them to do the Umrah. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the companion uh, to, uh, uh, to do tahallul, just to slaughter and to shave the heads. But it was so hard on, on the Sahaba. How they cannot enter Mecca? So they did not accept that. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, had seen that and he went into the tent with his wife, Umm Salama, and he said to her, this is what's happening. So her wisdom was amazing on that day that no other man could have advice, could have given Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, the same advice. So she said to him, Ya Rasulullah, go out, do not talk to anyone, get the sheep, slaughter it, and ask the uh, barber to, to shave your head. So when the Sahaba saw Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, doing that, they all did it. So that was the wisdom of Umm Salama radiallahu anha. So as we mentioned, one of the uh, merits of Umm Salama was narrating the hadith. And there were a lot of hadith that she narrated. Some of them were about uh, the merits of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu the characteristics of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the manners of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the generosity of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of the deeds to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She also mentioned and narrated the hadith of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepting the tawbah, the repentance of those who were uh, uh, who did not follow Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the battle. So she narrated the good, uh, the, the uh, happy hadith, and also she narrated the, the sad hadith. And that was uh, when Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, passed away. And he chose to, to, to go meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she said that when, when uh, 
it was the night when it was uh, uh, the time that Sayyidina Muhammad was was dying then she she put her 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 hand on the chest of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and she said weeks passed after then after he died that I would eat, I would perform wudu, and the misk order did not leave my the hand that I passed on Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Umar, uh, 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 so, so now Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. Uh, she lived uh, during the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, and uh, uh, then Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali, and she lived until the uh, time of Yazid ibn Muawiyah. So she was the last of the mother of the believers to pass away after Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she, it was the year 62 of Hijra when she passed away. And uh, she was, uh, uh, as I just mentioned, one of the amazing female uh, companion of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, amazing mother of the believers. And when you go to Medina, just stop by the Baqiya and visit all the mothers of the believers who are uh, buried there. So this was uh, Umm Salama radiallahu anha who um, who was uh, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her a better substitute to her husband. He gave her the best of the creation, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So many uh, lessons that we can learn from this amazing female companion. And the one that I really wanted you to focus on is if you have a calamity, then say the dua that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, has uh, uh, advised us to say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa abdilni khayran minha we all belong to Allah and we, to him we shall return. Ya Allah, re, uh, give me reward for my sabr, for, my, for accepting, for the riddah that I am practicing and replace me with something better. And have full yaqeen, full uh, certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will will accept your dua and will fulfill your dua. Moving on, we will talk about Umm Ayman radiallahu anha. Her name was How the young Abyssinian girl ended up for sale in Mecca. So, who is this girl? We don't know. We don't know her father. We don't know who her mother was. We don't know anything about her. All we know that she was a young Abyssinian girl who ended up for Mecca to be sold as a slave. Uh, and of course, there were many like her, boys and girls, Arabs and non-Arabs. So those boys and girls were captured and bought to in the slave market in Mecca. So some of them 
would have a terrible fate as they would end up in the hands of cruel masters and they would live a very miserable life. Baraka, the young Abyssinian girl, was one of the more, more fortunate ones. She was saved and she was bought by the generous, kind gentleman, Abdullah. Abdullah is the son of Abdul Muttalib. And Abdullah is the father of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So she became the only servant in, in his household. And when he was married to Amina radiallahu anha, she looked after her affairs as well. So Amina was the caregiver to, uh, 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 I'm sorry, so um, Baraka was the caregiver to Amina radiallahu anha. So now Sayyidina uh, uh, Abdullah and Amina, they got married. About two, year, two weeks after, after their marriage, Abdullah's father came to, to the house and he asked his son, uh, so he instructed his son to go with a trading caravan that was leaving for Syria. Amina was so sad. It was only two weeks after, after their marriage. And his departure was very heartbreaking. And soon after he left, Amina fainted. And Baraka was the one to take care of her. Two months later, after the, the departure of Abdullah, Amina, Amina called uh, Amina Rodilahana called Baraka, and uh, one morning she she came to her, and she was very 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 happy, and she said to her, "Oh Baraka, I've seen a strange dream," and Baraka asked, "Something good, my lady?" And Amina said. I saw lights coming out from my, my belly and lighting up the mountains, the hills, and the valleys around Mecca. So Baraka said, do you feel you are pregnant, my lady? And Amina said, yes, Baraka. But there's something strange. I don't feel any discomfort as other women feel during their pregnancy. So Amin uh, Baraka radiallahu anha said, you shall give birth to a blessed child who will bring goodness. So now, Abdullah was away. And Baraka was taking care of Amina. Radiallahu So Amina became uh, more distressed when uh, Abdul Muttalib came and told her she had to leave the home and go to the mountains. So, uh, uh, so, uh, and, and that's what uh, other Meccans had done because uh, there will be an attack by the ruler of Yemen, Abraha, on the on on Mecca because he he's going to destroy the capital. So Amina told, told him, she told Abdul Muttalib that she was too weak to go to leave for the mountains, but she insisted also that Abraha could never enter Mecca. He would never be able to destroy the Kaaba because it was protected by the Lord. So Abraha's army was destroyed before they even could enter Mecca. Now, day and night, Baraka, radiallahu anha, stayed by Amina. And she narrates, she said, 
I slept at the foot of her bed and heard her groans at night as she called for her absent husband. Her moans would wake me, would awaken me, and I would, uh, I would try to comfort her and give her courage. Time passed and the caravan came from Syria and everyone came back except for Abdullah. So Baraka, she went to Abdul Muttalib's house and the news came from Yathrib that Abdullah had died. So when Amina heard the painful news, she fainted. And of course, Baraka took care of her. So there was no one at the house except for, for Baraka. And she nursed Amina. She took care of Amina. And she took care of her day and night, day and night, until she gave birth to her child, who was named by his grandfather, Muhammad, sallallahu When Muhammad was born, Baraka was the first to hold him. She was the first to hold him in her arms. Then his grandfather came and took him to the Kaaba. And uh, his birth was celebrated. And Baraka stayed with Amina radiallahu anha all the time. Now, uh, Muhammad was sent to the Badia, to the desert, for to be nursed by Lady Halima. And again, it was five years that uh, that passed and Baraka was taking care of Amina radiallahu anha. When, when the five years ended, Muhammad, the amazing, beautiful boy, was returned back to Mecca. And Amina received him with, with love and uh, she hugged him. And she, she, it, it was an amazing, uh, amazing time to get her son back now uh we know the story of uh Sayyid muhammad when he was six his mother decided to take him to to uh, visit uh, the grave of uh, his father and it was, they, they did, they went to Bani Najjar, the family of uh, Amina. And uh, every day she would visit her, uh, the grave of uh, her husband. And uh, it was um, uh, about a few, few weeks that they spent there. And now, on the way back, Amina became seriously ill with fever. And halfway between Yathrib and Mecca, in a place called Al Abwa, they stopped. There was no way to go on. Amina's health deteriorated rapidly, and Amina knew that it was her death. So she she said to Baraka, "I'm." departing this world shortly and I commend my son Muhammad to your care he lost his father while he was in my in in my belly and he is now losing his mother under his very eyes so be a mother to him Baraka don't leave him at all don't ever leave him and Baraka wept and Amina passed away, and uh, with well, Amina, with with the the young boy, she they they both dug the grave, and 
and you know more uh, uh, moistened the grave with with her tears, with the tears of Sayyidina Muhammad Then Baraka returned with the orphan to Mecca, and his grandfather uh, took care of. Of, uh, of Muhammad and she was taking care of Muhammad she was with him then two years later the grandfather passed away and they were both Baraka and uh, Muhammad were moved to live with his uncle Abdul Muttalib and she was taking care of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until uh time passed and uh now he was grown up and he married Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha. So Baraka stayed with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with Khadija in the household in, in the house of Khadija radiallahu anha. And uh, one day uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Khadija, called uh, Baraka and she said to her, Yamma, Yamma. And this means my mother or mother. Now I'm, I'm a married man and you are still unmarried. Why do you think, what, what do you think, what do you think of if someone proposes to you for marriage? And Baraka said, I shall never leave you. Does a mother abandon her son? So Muhammad uh, وسلم, smiled at her and he kissed her at uh, kissed her her head, and he looked at his wife and Khadija radiallahu anha said to her, "Baraka." Uh, so so he said to Khadija, "This is my mother. After my mother, she took care of me." So Baraka looked at uh, Khadija radiallahu anha and Khadija said to her, Baraka, look, you have sacrificed your youth for the sake of Muhammad. Now he wants to pay back some of, of his obligations to you. For my sake, yani, the, the, uh, don't, uh, uh, we want you, we both want you to agree to marry uh, before you get so old. So Baraka looked at them and she said, who shall I marry? And she said, Ubaid ibn Zayd from Khazraj. And Khazraj uh, is a tribe in Yathrib, in Medina. So he, he, he proposed and he asked for to get married to you. And um, please do not forget, uh, do not refuse. So Baraka agreed and she married Ubaid and she went with him to Medina. She gave birth to her son who was named Ayman. We all know that her name, nickname was Um Ayman. So the marriage uh, did, not, uh, did not last very long. And her husband died. And she returned to Mecca to live again with her son, Muhammad, in the house of Lady Khadija. At that time, Sayyidina Ali was living there uh, Sayyidina Zayd ibn Haritha was living there, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad and uh, uh, the daughters. So everyone was living in the house. Now Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was uh, blessed with prophethood and Barakan uh, uh, and Zayd and uh, those the, the people who were living with, with Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, were the first to accept uh, the message and to become Muslims. One day, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with his companions and uh, it, it, they were in Dar al Arqam. And the non-believers had blocked off the roads leading to the house of Dar of al Arqam. And there was an important message from Khadija to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she said, I will go get it. I will, I, will, I will go and give it to him. So she did. She risked her life trying to reach the house of Al-Arqam. And she did. She, she was there. And she gave the message. And uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at her and you said, 
you are blessed on Amen. Surely you have a place in paradise. So he gave her the glad tidings of a place in paradise. And when she left, the Prophet ﷺ looked at his companions and he said, should one of you desire to marry a woman from the people of paradise, let him marry Um Ayman. Sayyidina Ali remained silent. The companions remained silent. But who was the one to step forward? She was now about 50 years old. And uh, Zayd said, Zayd ibn Haritha said, Messenger of Allah, I shall marry Um Ayman. By Allah, she is better than women who have grace and beauty. So, who is the Zayd? Zayd is uh, the beloved of Sayyidina Muhammad He was his own servant. And of, uh, he, of course, he was a freed uh, uh, son. He, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, dealt with him as a real son. But when Islam came, uh, he was uh, to say that uh, Islam abandoned uh, uh, adoption. So he is Zayd bin Haritha again because he was named Zayd bin Muhammad. They both got married. And they had uh, a blessed son whose name was Usama. And the Prophet وسلم, used to love Zayd and, the, uh, and his son a lot. So, subhanAllah, uh, there was later the migration to Medina. Um Ayman uh, migrated and he made this long and difficult journey through the desert and the mountains. She made it on foot. Imagine, she, she migrated walking. The heat was killing. The sandstorms of, uh, obscured the way, but she persisted until she reached there. When she was in Medina, her feet were sore. They were swollen and her face was covered with sand and dust. Seeing her, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, Ya Um Ayman, Ya Ummi, indeed, for you is a place in paradise. Bushra, Bushra for Um Ayman. So, uh, in Medina, uh, um Ayman participated in battles. She was in Uhud. She distributed water to the to the thirsty people, and she tended the wound the wounded ones. And she accompanied Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in other uh, in other ghazwas, in other battles. Her son Ayman was a devoted companion of the Prophet. He was murdered in Hunayn in the uh, eighth year after Hijra. And Baraka's husband, Zayd, radiallahu anhu, was killed in the battle uh, of Mu'ta in Syria after a lifetime of distinguished services to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to Islam. Now Baraka at this time was about 70 years old. And she spent most of her time at uh, at home. And the Prophet accompanied uh, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu an, an home, And they always used to, to visit her. And he said, Ya Ummi, are you well? And she would reply, I am well, O Messenger of Allah, as long as Islam is. So... She was devoted to Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam, And when he passed away, she was crying. And she was crying. And when she was asked about 
about that and she said by Allah I knew that the messenger of Allah would die but I cry now because of the revelation from the sky the revelation well it has to come to an end we are not going to to have any more revelation so Barakah was unique she was the only one who was so close to the Prophet ﷺ throughout his life, from birth until death. And Barakah anha passed away during the, uh, the time of uh, the Caliph uh, Osman. Her roots were unknown. But her place is paradise was assured by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was Umm Mubarak radiallahu anha. And with this we end our session for today. Inshallah, until we meet next week, I send my salam and your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته